Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to the Lord and Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. We have a very tragic brain scratch searchlight update for you guys today. You might remember it was about a year ago that we did the first coverage on Chelsea Poorman missing from Vancouver, British Columbia and Canada. Uh, she went missing the night of September 6th into the early morning hours on September 7th, 2020. Uh, you might remember bit of an inspirational story about her father taking to the van life to raise exposure to his missing daughter. We also had an interview that we did with him. I think it was just uh, the following week or two uh, after our initial coverage, Mike Kiernan. Uh, unfortunately, Chelsea's remains have been found at this point, but let's go ahead and rewind just a little bit uh, just to remind people that maybe didn't see those episodes, what this case is about. We're starting at bc.ctvnews.ca. Chelsea Poorman went missing in the summer of 2020, vanishing without a trace in the early hours of September 6th. Shortly after Poorman went missing, her dad dropped everything in Saskatoon and drove to Vancouver to find her. For the first year, he lived in his van, but now he has a small apartment. Uh, this update is actually just from earlier this year. It's from February of 2022. So it seems like uh, he stopped raising exposure using the van, moved to an apartment in the city area where she actually went missing from. He spends his days pounding the pavement, posting missing persons flyers, advertising a $20,000 reward for information that helps to find his daughter. Quote, Chelsea's gone and I can't find her. And that's the hardest thing I've ever dealt with in my life, he said in an interview with CTV News. Um, unfortunately, she is gone, and now she has been found, um, and I don't know. I, I did reach out to Mike. I haven't heard back from him as of the filming of this. Of course, uh, sent him our condolences, but I don't know, was, was it harder to deal with that, or is it harder to deal with this? Because at this point, we have her remains found, we have a lot of questions around that that I think are kind of common sense questions, but for some reason, it seems like law enforcement might not be interested in looking at this case any further. From what I understand, the missing persons investigation is certainly closed and they're commenting that they don't believe that there is any foul play component here. Um, I don't know that the family believes that, but let's go ahead and take a look at the official notice that came out from the Vancouver Police Department over at vpd.ca. Search for missing Vancouver woman ends tragically. This was posted on May 6th, 2022. Her remains were discovered outside an empty house in Shaughnessy late last month. Quote, this is not the outcome anyone wanted. We always hoped Chelsea would be found alive and our sympathies go out to everyone who knew Chelsea, loved her, and hoped she would come home safely, says Sergeant Steve Addison. She was discovered on April 22nd by contractors working at a vacant house near Granville Street and West 37th Avenue. For those of you that remember the original coverage, uh, Granville Street is basically the street where we think that she went missing, but 37th Avenue, not really near the area where she was known to be. VPD notified the BC Coroner's Service immediately after Chelsea's remains were found and has now received the findings from the coroner's investigation. Investigators believe Chelsea likely died on the property the night she disappeared or shortly thereafter, but went undiscovered because the house has been vacant for years. Her death is not suspicious. Now, this is interesting because we have a coroner's investigation. From what I understand, they can't determine cause of death. Um, so how we get from an undetermined cause of death to, we believe she died on that night and we don't think that there's anything suspicious about it. From what I'm seeing, uh, they also can't run toxicology. So it's not like they could confirm, oh, she had a lethal amount of something in her. Um, and her death not being suspicious, you know, it's limited information we're running with, but when you look at it, um, 
I, I got to tell you guys, I'm wondering twice about it. And I just, I don't know. There must be other details that they're not coming out with publicly. Um, I did see some comments from Sergeant Steve Addison that he was going to share what he referred to as personal details uh, with the family. Um, and I don't know if those details will be released publicly at either. And I don't know if that stuff really tips the scales um, based on what I'm seeing in terms of comments from the family they're kind of in the same boat that I'm in, in terms of this is tough to understand. Like just how do we get to this conclusion so quickly about her death, not being suspicious? Can we, can we understand this a little more or, or are we going to have more questions? Let's go ahead and start with just a little video clip from uh, a bit of the press conference around this. The exact cause of death may never be known. Um, and at this point it's considered to be undetermined. Um, we do believe that Chelsea likely died on that property, either the night that she uh, went missing or shortly thereafter and remained on that property undiscovered. So pretty clear cause of death undetermined. Here is a picture of the home and just from the outset, if you're taking a look at that place saying, wow, that looks, that, that doesn't just look like a, a home in a neighborhood that looks like a mansion. Uh, you're actually correct. This is a mansion worth about $7.1 million. And this area also pretty affluent. Shaughnessy is one of Vancouver's most exclusive neighborhoods featuring large homes on big lots that are often priced in the tens of millions. In 2017, it had the highest rate of empty homes in the city, according to the city of Vancouver. I didn't find a good reason for that. Um, in this particular instance, the owners don't live in Canada and they're saying that they were trying to get permits to get work done on this. I don't know if they were planning on reselling it, flipping it, moving back here, but the permits were taking them a long period of time and it was kind of just left vacant because of that. Um, it's owned by an offshore owner and like I mentioned, valued at 7.1 million. That's according to BC assessment and a big thank you to uh, the Tai for this information. Portman's body was found along with her clothing and some personal effects, Addison said, declining to say whether her cell phone or a leg brace and cane she used were also found with the body. Keep in mind, Chelsea had been in a very bad accident. We had heard from quotes from her family members that um, she had trouble walking. She had a leg brace and a cane that she would use. She also had a lifter in one of her other shoes. Um, so big questions in terms of were those items found with her, but even a bigger question in terms of where she's found, because, uh, for those that do remember the previous video, she was in contact with her sister. She sent a text message effectively saying that she was with her new bae at some point that night. So her sister was under the assumption that Chelsea had met someone and, and was with this person when she disappeared. That was kind of a big part of the initial coverage that we did on this. Who is this mystery person? Did they ever track them down? We're not seeing any information here uh, from Vancouver PD that they did actually close any of that investigative hoop. But there's a little additional detail that I don't remember if we had a year ago that's going to throw even more questions into this. But let's go ahead and continue here. Uh, Chelsea was in a car accident in 2014 and wore a brace on her left leg and a lifted shoe in her, on her right foot. The accident left her with rods in her leg and arm. Uh, Chelsea went missing after a dinner out with her sister. The two visited a friend of Kiernan's, that's her sister, and Chelsea left around midnight. Later, she sent her sister a message saying she'd met a new bae. Her cell phone would later be traced to Victory Square, 12 blocks away from where Kiernan last saw her. All right, time to bring up the map just to understand what's going on with this. First of all, uh, Granville Street, she was at uh, some friends of her sister's. They were at a party somewhere around 1278 Granville Street. That's way up here. The house that she's found at um, over three miles away, three miles south. So keeping in mind, this is someone that's going to have some difficulty walking and I'm not, I don't know the extent of that. I don't know if it's impossible for her to have walked three miles, but middle of the night, uh, walking three miles like that, um, you know, that's, that's probably about an hour of walking straight. If you do that, just all in one shot, uh, for an average walking tempo. 
But now we've got this ping with uh, this other location. That other location is Victory Square actually in the opposite direction of where she was last known to be. And from that location, if we're assuming Chelsea's walking on foot, we, we're now at about four and a half miles between uh, where we think her cell phone pinged and where she is actually discovered. And I'm just pointing this out to kind of draw attention to the fact that is it likely that she got a ride from someone? Is she interacting with someone else through this evening? I think her sister would certainly think so with the message that she got, the text message. But on top of that, the distance is showing us it's probably not likely that Chelsea is going off walking, uh, you know, almost three quarters of a mile in one direction, stops, turns around, comes back the way that she came from, goes much farther south over a bridge that goes over the English, a, a piece of uh, False Creek here. Um and then winds up in a mansion down here. Like that's another thing. I, I just, I don't have enough interpersonal information. Is she familiar with this area? From what I recall, I think she had just moved back to this area to live with some family only a few months prior to this, but would she be, I don't know, would she be familiar with one of these homes in this area for some reason? And then of course a vacant house like that, what else is going on around that? Um, VPD is being pretty open to the fact that there's probably squatters that would have been uh, staying in that location as well. So a lot of questions. And I, I just mean the questions alone that are leaving this open with an undetermined cause of death would at least, I, I just, I'm really, really surprised that police can, can tell this family, Hey, we think this is, this is not a foul play situation. We have her sister saying she was last known in contact with someone else. We have the directions not making sense for where the phone pings and then where her body winds up. Uh, if, if nothing else, at a minimum, we have the likelihood of her interacting with somebody else extremely high. Do they know about what happened to her? There still should be the potential for some criminal charges, even if you don't think that this person is actually responsible for her demise. There, there still should be some potential for other criminal charges in terms of hiding a body, moving a body. Uh, was, was there some drug component that was part of this? Who knows? There's all these things that could have come into play here that could have been factors in what led to her demise. And how are we going to learn those answers if we're just saying, you know, nope, no foul play, case closed? Um, I don't know. Over at globalnews.ca, the mother of a woman whose remains were found at a vacant Vancouver home says she won't give up her quest for answers. Somebody knows something still, what happened to her, said Sheila Porman. How did she die like that? Her cause of death remains undetermined, and because her remains were skeletal, police say toxicology is not possible. Sergeant Steve Addison also said... The area where she was found was quite unkempt and was overgrown. It's quite likely and quite plausible that she did die there shortly after she disappeared and remained there undiscovered until two weeks ago when a contractor came to work on the house. Now, in terms of where she's actually found at the house, I'm kind of hearing two different things. I heard an interview from a family member that says they were told she was actually found on, there's this big kind of back um patio, like this raised uh, deck that wraps the whole backside of the house. I've, I'm hearing a comment from one of the family members that she was found actually on that deck in some location. Beyond that deck is just kind of, it's not a giant backyard, but a, a, a section of backyard. And you can tell that, yeah, there's a bunch of trees and stuff that's overgrown there. So I'm not a hundred percent sure on what she found on the deck, what she found in the backyard. Uh, another comment that I saw from her mother makes it sound like she was actually found with a blanket that was covering her up. Once again, kind of leads you to down the thought of, you know, was someone else with her? Did someone else see that she was dead, cover her up? Once again, even if it's not uh, murder charges, uh, there's there seems to be other crimes that could be being committed around this. And I just don't know how all that all that stuff just stops in terms of investigation. But back to the comments here. Um, those answers aren't enough for Porman's mother who said she only has more questions. I don't know how she ended up in that place and alone without her phone. She said, adding her daughter couldn't walk far 
because of a leg injury. So this kind of giving us a little more support on, it doesn't make sense that she would have gone walking three or four miles. She was probably taken to that location by somebody. Um, interesting that her phone, this is the first mention we're seeing. And of course, this isn't law enforcement saying this, but they're saying that her phone is not with her at that location. Um, she's not saying that she was found without her brace or without her cane. Uh, I think we can kind of infer that maybe those items were actually found with Chelsea, but there's other, another big reason why her mother's having trouble believing all this. Um, we'll get to that in the next piece. Her mother is pleading for anyone with any information to come forward. She wanted to better herself. I know that she had many dreams. She wanted to do many things in her life. Contact the Vancouver police, let them know, even if it's a small detail, it could help us because we still need answers. I don't believe my daughter just died, ended up there alone and just died. I don't think that's the way it went. This past Sunday, there was a vigil held, um, and thankfully they had a representative, the, the owners of the mansion sent a representative that actually let um, people that were at the vigil um, go into the backyard so that prayers and respects could be paid at the location where Chelsea uh, remained for this past year. Uh, over at globalnews.ca, family, friends, and supporters of Chelsea Poorman gathered for a vigil at the vacant Shaughnessy home where her remains were found. Poorman's mother said she's not satisfied with the police explanation. There's something that I was told from the coroner, and I had to ask him twice if what he said was true. He said that Chelsea wasn't fully intact. She was missing her cranium, and she was missing some fingers. And they have the gall to say it's not suspicious and not foul play. Um, pretty big questions around that. Uh, very surprising at the term uh, of, that she was missing her cranium. I'm just not sure how that would have been removed. Uh, I would assume that it's been removed from the rest of the skull in some way. Um, does that show potential for some type of injury that maybe she had sustained? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. For now, Portman's mother said she'll be taking her daughter home for a proper burial, but she said she isn't prepared to stop fighting for answers to what happened to Portman and why it took so long for her to be found. She's also upset because she's like, where did they go searching? Like, you know, was this known to police that there was this area with all these houses that were uh, abandoned? Like, shouldn't we have been conducting searches there? Of course, if you have those as private property, I know here in the U.S. that runs it as a constant sticky point for uh, missing persons cases that, you know, we, we have friends that work directly on searches for. They talk about it all the time. You know, we have to get permission from the landowners. So um, could that have been sticky in terms of uh, in Canada as well? I would I would assume so. Uh, back to her mother's quote, we're going to fight for Chelsea for the truth of what happened to her because we're not going to sit by and let them say it's not suspicious and there's no foul play. We're not going to sit by and let them brush us under the rug. And apparently there is still a memorial that has been put up uh, in front of the mansion in honor of Chelsea Poorman at this point. So that is the very sad update on this case. Um, and I can totally understand why the family's left with so many questions. I don't know if those additional personal details that were mentioned by the sergeant are going to become public knowledge. If they, like I said, do they really move the needle in one direction or another? I, I don't know how you look at these conditions and say it kind of makes sense, you know? Uh, if she was found in the water the, of that bridge that I said that she had crossed, um, at some point she crossed it. I don't know if she was walking or if she was in a vehicle, but you, you could look at that and say, wow, it's really close to where she was last seen. It's a source of water. We know that, you know, sometimes people drink too much and they wind up in a body of water like that. That might be some type of reasonable conclusion, but that's really not what we have here. We've got her body being found in a, at a mansion that likely had squatters living there. You're, you mean to tell me that no one noticed, oh, there's a, there's a body in the backyard. Yeah. We're just going to put a blanket on that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. 
It makes me wonder like what type of, is, was this place being used as a party house? Like were people going there to do drugs? I don't know. There's just all these other components. Like I mentioned before, other potential for different types of crimes. And I don't know how you just stop the investigation at this point uh, without answering those questions, particularly about who did she leave with? How did she wind up there? If you can't prove that there is foul play, you also can't prove that this is a natural death. So how do we just kind of close this out and, and leave this family hanging like this? I'm, I'm really not sure, but I'm looking forward to your thoughts and feelings about this in the comments down below. And for Chelsea's family, um, we are so heartbroken for you guys. This is not the outcome that any of us were hoping for. And I would say, and I, I said this in the message I sent to Mike, don't stop. This, this, this is a step in this process for you guys to find truth and possibly justice in, in this case. Um, the work obviously isn't done yet. And if there's anything we can do to help you guys know how to, how to get a hold of me. Thank you so much for caring about this case. Like I do. Thanks for spending some time with me here today. Take care. And I'll see you back here on Friday with a brand new mystery right here on the Warden Arts channel.